Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another instant deck tech. So today we're heading again to Kaladesh Standard to check out a spicy new token deck. In the last standard, token decks were typically green-white. Well, things are changing. Now the token deck is green-black. So we're looking at this green-black tokens list, which recently took a Magic League user named HeebieJB to a top 8 finish in a Magic League event. So congrats to HeebieJB on their finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break it all down, if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So Green Black Tokens is pretty sweet. This deck is really built around maximizing Verderous Gearhulk, but the way it goes about maximizing it is pretty interesting. It is playing a ton of one drops, 16 one drops in fact, and they're kind of scattered all over. So uh, we have Narwood Dryad, which is essentially just a big beater. It has Death Touch, it can get bigger if you get Delirium, not super likely with this deck, but it's a 1-1 one -one Death Touch for one, so it's good on defense, can maybe get in some damage. Loam Dryad gives you a way to produce mana, up by tapping another creature. Crypt Breaker and Ovaya Parishi Sage Lifecrafter are two of the big ones because they allow you to generate tokens. So Crypt Breaker, pay two, discard a card, get a 2-2 zombie. If you ever make enough zombie tokens that you can tap three of them, you can draw a card. Ovaya lets you pay three to create a 1-1 servo, and then you can pay five to make a colorless XX construct where X is the number of creatures you control. So Avaya can make really big tokens really quickly in this deck because what you want to be doing is playing one drop one drop one drop getting a bunch of one drops on the board and then you also have a three drop that can go super wide so weapon craft enthusiast a zero one for three but it fabricates two so it either becomes a two three for three or makes two one one servo tokens so you just flood the board wide one drops this three drop that makes three tokens then you play cryptolith rights which lets you turn all of those one drops and all of the tokens you're making into Birds of Paradise, essentially, so you can trap your Crypt Breakers and Loam Dryads and Wormwood Dryads and all of those things and use that mana to make huge tokens with Ovaya, allows you to always activate your Crypt Breaker, so you dump all this mana into producing even more tokens and going even wider. You have Duskwatch Recruiter that takes advantage of that mana by letting you activate it multiple times to keep searching through the top cards of your library to find more creatures, so you're finding more Ovias and Crypt Breakers, just keeps the action flowing, and then you build up this huge board state and you close things out with things that put plus one plus one counters on your creatures. So Nissa Voice of Zendikar lets you anthem your entire team with plus one plus one counters. All your stuff gets bigger. Verderous Gearhulk lets you dump four plus one plus one counters however you want to across your creatures, or it can be an 8-8 itself. And even Durable Handicraft, which is a little surprising, but it's a backup way to put counters on creatures. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay one and you put a plus one plus one counter on the creature. So when you make a token with your Ovaya or with your Crypt Breaker, you pay one extra mana, and instead of being a 2-2 zombie, you get a 3-3. So that's kind of the idea of the deck. As a backup, Durable Handicraft, you sack it, get a plus one plus one counter on everything for six mana, but if you're playing Cryptolith Rites and all these one drops, it's pretty easy to do. So the deck is basically looking to just play a ton of things early in the game, and then use Cryptolith Rites to turn all of those early game plays into huge mana producers, pump up their early game creatures, and win the game by beating down. As far as the mana base, Westville Abbey is essentially a backup finisher. If you're going super wide with little creatures making all these tokens, pretty easy to use your Cryptolith Rites mana to just flip around Westville Abbey and have this huge, almost unbeatable 9-7 lifelinker. The rest of the mana base, you get Hissing Quagmire's, Blooming Marshes, Dual Lands, some forests and some swamps. In the sideboard, get a bunch of interesting removal. Take down and clip wings, help deal with flying creatures. Make obsolete is really strange. I guess the idea with this one is you can attack with all your stuff and play this at instant speed to trim down your opponent's creatures and get in a huge hit. It also makes sure that your opponent's just not chump blocking your stuff to death with uh, tokens from Planeswalkers, with servo tokens, a bunch of 1-1s. Ruinous Path can take care of a Gideon or another Planeswalker. Naturalize to deal with vehicles or other artifacts, but smugglers, copters everywhere, so it's a good answer to that. Lost Legacy fights against specific 
like combo-y all-in pieces. So if your opponent's playing an Etherworks Marvel Energy deck, this gets rid of the Etherworks Marvel. Going to make it really hard for your opponent to win. Then just some regular discard in Uvenwald Mystery for control decks. So Transgress, very good if your opponent's kind of going long, playing Planeswalkers and big threats, and Uvenwald Mysteries kind of protects your deck from removal, lets you get some clue tokens to keep grinding through the deck, and even some 1-1s when you set clues. And that is green-black tokens for Kaladesh Standard, and that's been our instant deck deck for today. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon.